Hello, and welcome to round two of the Parenting Roundabout podcast. I'm Katherine Haleko, and I'm here with Terry Morrow. Hello. Usually on this podcast, we talk about parenting issues, but once a week, Terry and I like to get together to discuss TV, movies, books, and other entertainment topics, because it's nice to talk about something other than parenting for a change. This week, we are continuing with our watch of the series Veronica Mars and the accompanying podcast Veronica Mars Investigations. But we're also watching Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. So first, let's talk about Zoe's Extraordinary Confession. So this one had some, you know, deep conversations and deep thoughts. But it did have some singing and, and dancing. dancing. It had an actual flash <laughs> dancing. I know. I, you know, I loved that number. And I like Max quite a lot. And I'm rooting for the guy. But you just broke up with somebody like an episode right. ago. Should you be flash mobbing your best friend with an I love you confession? Yeah. I don't know how much time we are to think how many movie nights have gone between the past episode and this one, but that seemed weird. Yeah. I think as you got in deeper into the episode, it did. They did want you to think that a fair amount of time had – well, not really because they talked about Simon's party like, hey, it just happened. That's true. So. And they're just now getting somebody to help the the dad. Right. From – the scary no nonsense nurse to the fun nurse. <laughs> <laughs> the fun nurse that makes chocolate shakes and plays poker. <laughs> I gotta think there might have been a third third uh, choice there, but okay. <laughs> it is a TV show and you know, if you're picking somebody to take care of your husband, you don't really want them to do it better than you were doing it. So the guy they wound up with should be just fine. And it helps if they're a guy who looks pretty strong. <laughs> yeah, right. Definitely. <laughs> Once again, lots lots went on in this episode because it's an hour long episode, I guess. Um, Leaf and Joan, uh-huh. yuck. The less no, said about that, you, the better. Right? And you know, the idea they came up with. I got to think of it. If it was that easy to do. It would either have been done already or there was a reason why. Well, the reason why is that it's it's creepy. And (laughs) do people want that? It's sort of like seeing inside people's thoughts and having them sing to you. Well, and it's also, isn't it kind of like Google Glass and that? Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. It's like this must (laughs) be. It's like the earbud I want to put into my children so I can tell them <laughs> right. what to what do, to do in every given situation. It's called the but I don't think they were weird <laughs> <laughs> Now, Mo, they go to Mo so that Mo can prove that this thing Zoe is saying is really real. But Mo's really just taken Zoe's word for it too, right? Yes, I guess Mo. I guess Zoe did know what was going on that time. Right. And I I think, but still a perceptive friend could probably have known that something was going on and followed. But Zoe has never been perceptive until this happened. And well, that's true. That alone should tip Max off. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's just that Mo, Zoe has just been telling Mo everything all all along. So, Mm -hmm. and Mo has, has faith, I guess. That's right. I thought I actually thought it was going to be a cliffhanger at, towards the end. Yes, when, where she says, "I'm going to do what I should have done a right. long time ago." And I thought, well, this is click. the end of this episode, and then I looked, and there's like 15 yeah. minutes more. It's like that's too bad. Yeah, I would have been happy to stop right. it there before For our certain late plot developments our came usual along. Usual comment that this <laughs> is. We would prefer a half-hour sitcom. Yes. Oh, we should mention, I don't know if you got a chance to listen, but um, if you listen to the Good Place podcast, um, obviously that show is over, but they periodically Mm -hmm. toss something onto their feed, and this past week it was, let's see if we can help our fellow NBC show, Zoe's Extraordinary (laughs) Playlist. (laughs) And they had, because they had Ted Danson on, and and it was Uh mostly about Ted Danson and The Good Place. But there was, since he's married to Mary Seenbergen, there was Uh conversation about Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. And I had to, I have to say that neither Ted nor Mark Evan Jackson was 
raving about the show. Oh, dear. (laughs) Was it at the beginning when they were talking about it, or did they talk about it later? They talked about it more, I think. I think they may have talked about it twice. Um, You know, I mean, Ted was great. You know, he he obviously, Uh he loves his wife, and he's, you know, willing to promote her show. But uh-huh. it definitely sounded more like, and and for Mark Evan Jackson, that he was just like doing this because he works for NBC. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe I have to fast. I, I started listening to that. And as much as I love The Good Place, you know, there was always the problem with mm-hmm. the podcast about it being, yeah. look how great we are. And I could tolerate that when the show was on and I was getting, you know, I was enjoying the show and I was getting some inside information from the podcast, but just now, all these weeks later, all by itself, Mm -hmm. I couldn't listen. (laughs) I had to bail early on, have nothing but goodwill for Mark Evan Jackson and Ted Danson, but this is done now. So, stop. You're taking a a Nicole (laughs) Eredick's tack of when it's over, it's over and we don't go back. (laughs) Enough with the victory laps, okay? Um, so. Well, I did learn from it that Mary Steen Bergen doesn't play the guitar, but she does play the accordion. <laughs> I heard that part. Yes. <laughs> Which was sort of a fun little piece of truth. Yes. And also that in On the Good Place, when she appeared as um, Michael's guitar teacher, mm-hmm. that the idea was – that they were going to fall in love. Ah. Which I didn't figure okay. out from watching the show. <laughs> Except that you knew. That I knew that they were married in real life. It was life, his wife. So. And I guess that yeah. was meant to tip us off that. <laughs> That's all the shorthand yeah. we need. But apparently. We good place watchers were used to doing a lot of work. It wasn't enough shorthand for me because I missed it. <laughs> That's why they have the podcast. <laughs> That's right. I guess we do still need to, to be told things. Informed. Maybe I should go back and <laughs> and drag it out of the trash and listen to it. I wouldn't mind a podcast about Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist to explain everything that's going. Mandy Moore needs to have a podcast to talk about all the stuff. But I did very much enjoy the dancing and singing in this one. Yeah. I, did, I could have done without Leaf singing to Joan, but otherwise, <sighs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> that's true. And and Mary Steenburgen may be a, a terrific accordionist, but she's not such a good lip singer. Mm-hmm. So, and also, it just it wasn't necessary. It was a weird song, and it wasn't. I mean, necessary. because then Zoe was like, "Mom, do you need something?" Like she could have said, "I felt like she was going to say that anyway," and or she, you know, yeah. the mom brought them in the other room just to talk to them. So of yes. course she needed something. Mm-hmm. Like there was no, yeah, there was no yeah. need to see into her brain at that time. Like it was clear, correct? She was thinking, yes, so. that was an unnecessary yes. little number. But but when you have sixty minutes to fill, or forty-two, or whatever, yeah. So I would feel better about this episode if I didn't know that the next episode was going to be her extraordinary glitch, which sounds like things are not going to be going. Maybe well. she'll sing. Maybe. Maybe, there maybe you the go. glitch will be that she'll be revealing her feelings by, ah, by singing somehow. Well, that would be good. That would be kind of fun, right? Will she be dancing also? I hope so. Will there be dancing? <laughs> Please. I like the dancing. <laughs> Do guys actually hire flash mobs just to tell girls they love them? I mean, I could see a proposal. Right. I could see a prom invitation. But for I love you seems risky. Yes. And he knew it was risky. Well, I don't know. Maybe he didn't. <laughs> I didn't say- <laughs> If he had three rehearsals with people, how much is he paying those dancers? Yeah, probably kind of a lot. That could be. Yeah. So I don't know. Mm. That seems seems a little over the top there, Max. A little needy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just, just hang. Our podcast is sponsored today by Best Fiends. The match and blast puzzle adventure with high quality visuals, tons of cute characters, and fun ways to level up. What with all this free time, I am playing Best Fiends nonstop. I have amassed quite a lot of little yellow and blue guys. I have almost 75,000 yellow ones right now. What? 
send me some. I am so low on them. Every time I get a few, I spend them. How do you get so many? <laughs> Best Beans has clearly become my go-to game as well. And I'm on level 255. It helps me pass the time while waiting in line and keeps my stress levels low now that both of my adult children are living at home again. It really is a nice break in a stressful time. I find myself using it to procrastinate from both work and, like, news now. No more Facebook. I'm hanging with the bugs. (laughs) Right. And since you don't need internet to play, it's perfect for these bandwidth hogging Ah, days with four people at home. Engage your brain with fun puzzles and collect tons of cute characters. Trust me, with over 100 million downloads, this five-star rated mobile puzzle game is a must-play. Download Best Fiends free on the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R. Best Fiends. So on Veronica Mars... The title of the episode is The Girl Next Door, and The Girl Next Door happened to be Jessica Chastain. (laughs) Baby Jessica Chastain, (laughs) you're so cute. This was, I looked on IMDb, this was her second credit. Wow. (laughs) Oh my gosh. So she's looking very young and very pregnant, and it turns out very sort of impulsive and... She doesn't live next door, actually. She lives upstairs. She lives upstairs. <laughs> Would you have recognized that as Jessica, Jessica Chastain if her name had not been in the credits? Yeah, I think I Because I saw her name go by and said, whoa! And then there she is. Yeah. She's very, I think she's very, pretty very young. Distinctive. I guess, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, can't I guess go back I can and unsee the credits. Exactly. So. <laughs> Me either. Um, but yeah, so, so this was kind of a. You know, this was a tough yeah. one. I guess. Yeah. I guess many of them are, but um, it was be- also not very good. Yeah, I mean, it was just <laughs> you know, Veronica was really like endangering herself. Yeah, um, quite a bit, and yeah. she was they, making poor choices. She was, and you know, you kind of knew that the creepy boyfriend of Jessica Chastain had to be a red herring. Like, right. There's no way that he was going to be the bad guy Mm -hmm. um, because it was just too obvious too early as, as we've discussed with Mm -hmm. procedural. (laughs) Um, But he was still very unpleasant (laughs) to watch. And, I don't know. know. And then I wanted the boss to be a bad guy because he was so smarmy. Yeah. But as they talked about on the podcast, I mean, it just kind of, it, they dropped that bomb of, <laughs> you know, this, that the stepfather had raped yeah. her, like, two minutes before the yes. episode was over. I mean, it was just no, ooh, no way to really, like, get into discussing it or, um, you know, thinking about the the terrible impact that that would have on someone yes. it was um it was all sort of you were supposed to infer it from everything that had happened before yeah and the that whole, was uncomfortable yeah it was just it was oddly paced and just seemed poorly thought out mm-hmm. and it's like oh well we need a mystery so I, it's, you know we last week we were talking about all these students of Neptune High that appear for one episode and are never seen again right and here it was the neighbor we've never seen before. Right. We've never seen them outside of the apartment, I don't think. No. We never had the impression that they had neighbors. So there's the neighbor we'd never seen before and then the teacher we'd never seen before. Have we ever seen that teacher? I don't think so. No. And like I'm he's sure popping we in won't for see him again. <laughs> <laughs> he and Jane Lynch are going to be running the uh, yeah. um, detention for once used characters. <laughs> exactly. It's, yeah. They got to stop doing that. It's like, well, maybe they don't, but it's it's getting to be noticeable and humorous. Yes, the way people just come out of nowhere. Yeah, I mean, as I, again, as they talked about on the podcast, sort of the most fun of it all was Weevil and Logan <laughs> getting up true. to shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those boys! Yeah. Let's let's destroy books and a teacher's car. That, that'll be fun. <laughs> yeah. It reminds me of when I was in high school, a girl that we knew had a tiny little car. And some of the boys just picked it up and put it on the other side of a fence. Oh, so gosh. that's sort of what I thought they were going to do with this tiny little car. But no. No, they, they, they took they it a step further. They did some feat of 
of metal shop work to get it there. Right. Which, the flagpole returns. Yes. Whether Logan confessed because he wanted credit or because he just is becoming a good guy. Right. He developed a I'm, conscience. I got to believe that was mostly Weevil. That that seemed to fall more into Weevil's skill set than Logan's. I don't know. On the Veronica Mars Investigations podcast, which was way more fun than the episode this week, mm-hmm. um, they seemed to feel that he was doing it just because he was, you know, wanting to get the credit. I, I kind of felt like he was... It was another tiny baby step in the direction of decency for that character. Yeah, I, I felt like... They still like got a he, long way to go, but... I felt like he did have a small twinge of conscience. Right. Of not wanting Weevil to take the fall entirely. Yes. And maybe he like was like, well, school's it. no fun without Weevil, so let's get exactly. him back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, we have not noticed, had an opportunity to notice in all this time that Weevil has a lily tattoo. Yeah. In a place that, while, you know, not going to show up in a t shirt, is not exactly hidden. Mm-hmm. You know, if the guy's going swimming, people are going to see his tattoo. Yeah. So that seems like, where did that come from? Mm-hmm. Like the. Never before seen students. We have a tattoo who just came out of well, nowhere. right. And allegedly now suddenly Weevil has a sister named <laughs> Lily. Yeah, that well, was no. his excuse. Like, <laughs> no, he really doesn't. Yeah. And, yeah. So, and, you know, so it's just more and more and more hints in that direction. Yeah. Um, of, uh, you know, I won't, I won't say what Helen Saltzman said on her podcast, but y'all should go listen. <laughs> what, mm-hmm. what, uh, people are supposing Weevil was involved with. So, um, and this whole, all the flashbacks in this one, I, I assumed that Duncan dumped her after Lily was killed. Me too. Because her dad was investigating. Isn't that what we had been dr- I, led to believe? Yes. Yes. That is exactly what I thought. And so I was, I kept thinking, are these flashbacks or is this ghost Lily? Yeah. It was kind of hard to tell. She was a little kind of, you know, a couple of times I thought I saw her flicker, but no, I think we, we were to believe that was a flashback. Right. Yeah, that was so, a whole new piece of information. That Yeah, I think there's some retconning going mm-hmm. on here. Yeah. <laughs> I think somebody in the writer's room said, hey, what about? Yeah. Um. So, okay. Leaving us wondering, speculating what it was that Duncan found out that made him dump Veronica without any explanation. Mm-hmm. I don't like any direction this is going. No. It seems to change direction quite frequently, so possibly. Yes. We you might just need to get used to it. <laughs> wait it out. It'll go someplace else. But on the podcast, they're kind of, um, they say that they don't do spoilers for future episodes, but uh huh. that's, there's way too many, like, hints and assumptions that... Yeah. Of things that really have not been made clear on the actual. Right. If you ask. I mean, I think that they've usually been, I mean, I think that we were made to go, hmm, when Keith said that about raising another person's child. Although I don't think that if the conclusion was the same as the one they were drawing from it, that you would say it like that. Yeah. I don't think a person who did that would say it that way. Right. They could say it shows how much he loves her and then leave it at that. Mm. Uh, so that makes me think that it's not what they are supposing. Right. And, um, you know, mathematically it wasn't, wouldn't have happened while they were high school sweethearts anyway. So I guess we have to imagine that Jake and Leanne had a recurring thing Mm -hmm. all the way up to the point where Veronica ID'd her license plate at the hotel. Right. Which is like 25 years later. (laughs) Exactly. I guess we will see where this is going, right. but mm, I, I hope they're not tipping their hands by surmising based on evidence. But let me just, just encourage you never to Google the name of any of these characters, because Google autocomplete is quite the spoiler. <laughs> I will avoid that. I will also say that I, str- of all the many disturbing things in this episode, and of course there were some horrifying and disturbing things, lady dressed like the 50s graduated in 1979. <laughs> I graduated in 1977. I would like to lodge a protest. <laughs> Yes. That well, was it's ridiculous. true that in the 70s, we did have 50s dress up day quite frequently. Mm-hmm. We didn't wear it 
outside of school <laughs> X number of years later. Stop it. Yeah, that Stop was it. ridiculous. <laughs> My husband and I both looked at each other and said, this is not right. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and he's even older than me. Yeah, so. that was that was yeah quite a protest. Silly. <laughs> I mean, the seventies. Goodness knows had plenty. I, I understand that you're going to be mocking the pictures in the yearbook, but really, you know, in uh, two thousand four, this was set. Mm, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, in two thousand four, we dressed pretty much like people in two thousand four. Yeah, really, we did. <laughs> Exactly. Although I, I, I'm getting to enjoy the wardrobe criticisms and the Veronica Mars investigations because really some of her outfits, yes, some of the color they schemes, do spend an enormous uh, amount of time on everyone's clothes. But yes, it's <laughs> but it was better than the '70s. The '70s was a particularly oh, yeah. it, it was uh, a- uncomfortable era for fashion. Yeah. I do not deny. And I do enjoy the uh, recurring feature on the podcast of the lawyer who comes on. Yes. Who's a that fan was fun. of the show. Uh-huh. And she comes on and explains all the crimes that um, Veronica commits. And yes. When we finished this episode, my husband was particularly irate. She broke into his house. He should have called the police. And the guy at the clothes store should have called the police. And this and that. And I'm like... Sometimes you have to let art flow over you. (laughs) Yes. Well, we will let it flow over (laughs) us for another week. Yes. Because next week we're going to talk about the seventh episode of both of these shows. Uh Um, uh, Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. The episode is called Zoe's Extraordinary Glitch. Hmm. Uh Uh-oh. And the Veronica Mars episode is Like a Virgin. Uh So that will be it for our round two today. Please subscribe to our Parenting Roundabout podcast so you won't miss any of our episodes. We have something new for you every weekday. As always, you can find recaps, links, and an opportunity to comment on our website at parentingroundabout.com. Bye, Terry. Bye, Catherine. Goodbye, everyone.